Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Simplify's tutorials. In this tutorial we're going to look at the PDCA model, the DMAIC model, we're going to simplify the models through use of uh, examples and then we're going to compare the two models together. Now the PDCA and the DMAIC models are both used for problem solving and for process improvement. So we start off with looking into PDCA with an example, then look at DMAIC with an example, and then finally compare the two. Now let's get into it. PDCA is a cyclic or repetitive four-step model of problem solving and continuous process improvement. It stands for plan, do, check and act. It is a concept derived out of total quality management and can be used not just in manufacturing or production but also in project management or human resource management. And just to clarify, PDCA uh, is different to PDSA which is also called the Deming Wheel or the Deming Cycle. Anyway, today we are going to look into PDCA. Graphically, the model looks as follows. but you can use any type of a cyclic graphic to represent PDCA. Okay, now let's look into the four components in detail. We must firstly understand that there is either a problem to be solved or there is a process to be improved here, which is the reason why the PDCA cycle is being implemented. Now, the first stage is plan. In this stage, the onus is to help decision makers understand the nature of the current inefficiencies and other factors like cost and the benefit of the actions proposed. So we look at uh, the, the current inefficiencies, cost, the benefits, etc. and then look into improving the process or solving the problem. Some of the questions that can be asked in this stage are as follows. What, are, what is the problem or the opportunity at hand? Do we have information to, to quantify the extent of the problems or the benefits of the opportunity? Can we define how we measure success? Can we assess our improvement methods? Are we using available resources? Or do we actually need new resources? So these are some of the questions you can actually ask in the planning stage to come up with the plan. The next stage is do. Now this is the testing stage wherein we actually make the changes proposed but to a smaller scale in a test environment to begin with. It is important here to ensure that all stakeholders are informed of the changes and that they are aware of any changes to the way they do things. It's also always best to ensure that the implementation is carried out in stages. Ensuring this will prepare us to deal with any unpredicted problems that uh, that might arise during implementation. So the next component is check. So this is an important stage wherein we analyze the results of the test that we've just performed, assess the outputs, measure the outputs against our success factors which we came up with in the planning stages and document any issues encountered. This stage will be pivotal in terms of avoiding any recurring mistakes and in terms of uh, introducing efficiency. Now the last stage in this model is the ACT stage. This is the final implementation stage where you execute the solution to a wider scale as defined in the planning stage. So you also decide when the ACT stage is going to come into play in the planning stages. Here, it's extremely important to take into account the learning derived from the test. We will now monitor the outputs or the outcomes of the initiative against our set standards. If there is a problem identified or if there are further improvements anticipated, then we can once again look to go back to the planning stages and repeat the cycle until we get the desired level of efficiency. So the efficiency, the level of efficiency that we decide in the planning stages, if it, isn't, if it hasn't been achieved in the first round, then you just go around the, the circle again, uh, make amendments to the plan, run another test, uh, and then implement 
the uh, the new findings. So this is how we keep going in a loop in the PDCA uh, methodology. Now let's look at an example to simplify this concept for you. Uh, in our tutorial on the building blocks model, we, we looked at a company called Only Pizzas Limited, which is a specialized pizza chain. Now, if you haven't actually gone through that tutorial, don't worry. It's just a chain of specialized pizza restaurants that we're going to be using as an example company here. Now, let's assume that our pizza chain isn't doing very well and thinks of introducing a completely new experimental flavor of, of pizza. Our job is to use the PDCA uh, methodology to introduce the new flavor amongst the options, the regulars. In the planning stage, you decide to come up with three flavors. You are to sell a flavor each week for nine weeks. That is what you decide. You also decide an individual promotional leaflet that you're going to come up with per flavor. And you decide to hand over the customers with this leaflet, this leaflet with the menu rather. The leaflets will be shuffled in accordance with the weekly offering. So you'll use a different leaflet per week. So we have essentially now planned how we would actually run the test. And we go on to the do stage and this is where you actually design the leaflets and then pla the planned tests go ahead. And the next stage is the check stage. Uh, and this, this stage in our example will come after the conclusion of the nine week testing period. And here we actually analyze the results and pick the winner. And the final stage is the act stage. And the winner is now introduced uh, into the menu full time with the relevant marketing that goes into the regular items on the menu. And you basically uh, announce that you've got a new item on the menu. So this is how you would typically run the PDCA model in a simple example. If it's a complicated organization, a project in a, in a larger organization, whatever, you can still use this model with great effect. Now let's move on to the next model, which is the DMAIC model. Now DMAIC is a data-driven process improvement and problem-solving tool. Now this comes from the Lean Six Sigma Quality Improvement Methodology. It stands for Define, Measure, Analyze, Improve and Control. And this is how we would typically represent it graphically. And now let's look at the stages in detail. So the first stage is Define. Here we try to define or identify the problem encountered or the opportunity available. In this stage, we we look at we also look at customer requirements. Okay, and if the problem or the opportunity arose from a customer need, we would also need to gather feedback from re relevant and potential customers here, as you'd imagine. In organizations deploying DMAIC, it is a common practice to to draft what is called a project charter. A project charter is essentially a document that outlines the scope of the project, the approach taken and the motivation of the team. And the next stage is measure. Now this is where you would collect data to try and quantify the issue. Unless the issue or the opportunity is quantified, it is difficult to formulate actions to correct course or to, to introduce improvements. In order to measure improvements, this stage is also used to plot relevant baselines. In other words, we try and understand where we stand now in terms of the numbers and look at look to plot improvements against this standard. The next stage is analyze. This is the important stage wherein we look at the data gathered and look for the root cause of the problem at hand. One of the ways of doing this would be to run a root cause analysis, which we extensively covered in another dedicated tutorial in this channel which I very, very highly recommend that you check out I'll link it to this tutorial and once the root cause has been identified it would be easier to identify the other controllable and non-controllable factors the next stage is improve this is where you design and implement changes and look to fix the root causes of the problem since there is a change being introduced here it's important to communicate with the relevant stakeholders. 
Brainstorming with relevant stakeholders is actually one of the many ways of out outlining a suitable solutions in this model. It is important here to produce multiple solutions and brainstorm on the best possible solution for your situation. The next stage is control, which is the final stage. It is not just important to introduce an improvement or to solve a problem. It's, it's important to also ensure that the problem doesn't reoccur. This is where the control stage comes in. Here, you essentially put mechanisms in place to ensure that the improvements are sustained. This consists of a monitoring plan to continually track the improvements generated and also a plan to deploy corrective actions in, ca in case there are deviations in performance. Okay, so that was, that was clarified hopefully for you, but if not, we look at an example now. Now, again, let's go back to our Only Pizzas Limited example and let's assume that the problem they face now is dropping customer review scores and they've decided to use the DMAIC model or methodology to, to try and correct this problem. Here are the five stages in use, first stage being define. Now here, the problem is an increase in the number of bad reviews and more specifically, customers it seems are not liking the food as much and are not providing five star ratings on Google, Facebook, Instagram, TripAdvisor, etc. And it's quite easy to see that if not immediately, this could clearly have a direct impact on sales in the medium to long term. So we move on to the next stage, which is measure. We measure the current state, which would be an average of all ratings across all channels. The next stage, which is analyze, we run a root cause analysis and then we identify the root causes to be the quality of the dough used, which made the pizza base too soft, especially in delivery orders. So this was identified as a result of the root cause analysis. Now, the next stage, which is improve, the obvious solution for this problem was found out to be to get better quality dough despite a higher price. And in the next stage, which is control, the control measure would be to firstly keep testing internally to encourage most, more people to leave reviews after the improvement has been introduced. And then finally, to keep monitoring and tracking the improvements in the reviews. So we try and put in place a method to, to ensure that the quality, the increase in quality that we would achieve is sustained and then there aren't any more lapses in terms of the ratings achieved. Now let's look at comparing the two stages together. The explanation we have seen so far directly indicates that DMAIC has a much greater emphasis of the two on planning and PDCA has a greater emphasis on testing. Now both methodologies therefore have their own importance. Now let's compare the two side by side and derive some additional learning on usability. Now let's look at the graphic below. As we can see in the graphic, uh, DMAIC has a huge focus on planning. We therefore see three stages in, uh, in DMAIC equating to one stage in PDCA, which is the planning stage. The do stage of PDCA consists of testing the initiative. Now, this can actually equate to the improve stage of DMAIC. Although we are implementing the solution and not actually testing it in, in DMAIC, unlike in PDCA, uh, the brainstorming aspect in DMAIC tries to narrow the solution down to one, right? The check and the act processes in PDCA equate to the control process in DMAIC. And what do we learn out of all this? What should you actually use? Now the question here clearly depends on the context of your project. Uh, the answer to the question depends on the context of your project and your organization. But if you look at Albert Einstein's perspective for instance, he famously stated once that if he had an hour to solve a problem, he would spend 55 minutes to, to determine the proper questions to ask and then solve the problem in five minutes. And what does this mean? This means that the, the planning stages are the most important stages 
in any improvement or a change process and that we actually get most of the work done by getting that done right and with the emphasis of on of of DMAIC laying on planning it clearly becomes the deeper of the two approaches but it's also quite extensive and expensive to implement in most situations you would therefore need to look at the feasibility of using DMAIC and use it if your resources permit to do permit you to do so and also it's not always possible to test a solution before implementation like you do in PDCA so it's 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 easier to do if to to run tests in IT projects for instance but but not in every single type of project so there are quite a few things that you can take into consideration and you should take into consideration before choosing which approach to use hopefully hopefully this uh, tutorial has uh, made it easier for you if you were trying to consider to finalize one of the two approaches to be used okay hopefully that tutorial was helpful for you i thank you very much for your attendance as always and as always please like this uh, tutorial please subscribe to the channel and please keep sharing and coming back to these tutorials and also use the comment section to request for any content you want covered in this channel Thank you very much.